In other news, PG&E's new plan to prevent wildfires could impact thousands of people in areas not prone to wildfires. The utility announced earlier this year it will turn off power to high voltage transmission lines during extreme fire conditions and that could mean lights out for cities far away from potential fires. Katie Nielsen was one of the first reporters at the scene of our own destructive wildfires and she's got the story. Hey Katie. Hey, Brian. So obviously here in downtown San Francisco, we're not at risk for damage from a wildfire, but some of those high voltage transmission lines go through those wildfire prone areas, meaning if there were to be a big fire in the East Bay, PG&E could turn off the lines that supply power to the city, meaning almost a million people could be in the dark. Massive and destructive wildfires are the new norm in Northern California, and PG&E has been at the center of the firestorms, literally and figuratively. As investigators revealed, the utility's power lines were the cause of multiple deadly fires in Northern California, including the Wine Country fires in October 2017. Immediately after, the utility announced plans to start selectively shutting off power to wildfire-prone areas during extreme weather. But those shutoffs did not include high voltage transmission lines, which carry power hundreds of miles across the state. The same type of lines eyed as the cause of last year's deadly fire near Paradise. Cal Fire investigators did determine that the campfire was caused by transmission lines owned and operated by PG&E. That announcement just came on Wednesday. A few weeks before, on April 25th, PG&E filed updates to its wildfire mitigation plan with the California Public Utilities Commission. One major change, now even those high voltage lines will be de-energized in certain situations, meaning San Francisco could possibly be de-energized if multiple East Bay transmission lines were to be de-energized due to extreme conditions. Keeping the, uh, the power on is very important. You're talking about power to street lights, you're talking about powers to elevators, cell phone towers. So when you turn that off proactively, that uh, creates a whole new set of um, a safety risk for, for other people to consider. People we talked with in San Francisco have mixed reaction to the plan. I think it's a good move and a very selfish move. In the long run, it will def uh, definitely benefit pg and &E. I mean, I understand keeping people safe, but at the same time, keeping the people in San Francisco safe, we need lights. There are other high voltage transmission lines that supply power to San Francisco. There are some that run under the bay. Others come up from the peninsula. Now, PG&E says if the East Bay lines go down, could mean that it would cause a domino effect, knocking out power to parts of San Francisco, possibly the entire county. Brian? Katie, we already know PG&E is financially on the hook for some of the wildfires. So it would seem to me that they would be almost trigger happy in their desire to turn off power if there's even a small threat. So what are the conditions under which PG&E says, you know, we're going to cut the power because we don't even want there to be a ghost of a chance of any future liability? Right, not only financial liability, but now they're also talking about potential criminal liability. Now, the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, is actually stepping in, and they are going to have a meeting on May the 30th to set up guidelines on how and when these utilities could voluntarily turn off power. PG&E has repeatedly said in statements their top priority is maintaining power to customers so long as it's safe. Boy, that's going to be complicated. In San Francisco, Katie Nielsen. Katie, thank you.